This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey, welcome to 12 Tones, where I was talking recently with my friend Patrick from the YouTube channel Name Explain. Hello. We were mostly working on a video for Patrick's channel about Beethoven and whether or not his family name survives, link in the description, hint hint, but we're both YouTubers, which means we're easily distracted, and we quickly wound up talking about other places where names and music intersect. Specifically, we were talking about where the names of musical genres come from, and even more specifically, we were talking about my favorite genre, heavy metal. That's a weird name. Why is it called that, and who came up with it first? Well, that's a surprisingly difficult question to answer. Google turned up like five different explanations, but eventually I was able to dig up an actual scholarly article by Professor Dina Weinstein, who literally wrote the book on the sociology of heavy metal. In fact, she's written two. A lot of this video is based on her research, and it turns out the story is pretty wild. There's a couple of possible sources here. The one I'd always heard was that it came from the Steppenwolf song Born to be Wild, released in 1968, whose lyrics mention heavy metal thunder, making it probably the first song to use the term. The lyricist, Dennis Edmonton, described it as an attempt to represent represent the thunderous roar of motorcycles, which are both heavy and metallic. Given the prevalence of biker fashion in modern metal, it's easy to see why this etymology would be appealing. Another possible source, though, is the work of beatnik author William S. Burroughs, whose Nova trilogy features an android character named Uranian Willie the Heavy Metal Kid. In fact, the term heavy metal appears frequently in Burroughs' work, often used as a metaphorical stand-in for heroin. The word heavy was also just a part of beatnik and hippie vocabularies, meaning profound or powerful, two words that could certainly describe early metal music. But there's a third, perhaps less expected place where the term heavy metal pops up. Science. Chemists use it to describe certain portions of the periodic table, although looking it up, there doesn't seem to be a precise definition for which metals actually count as heavy. Still, it's a common term in high school chemistry classes, and it was also in the news at the time. Growing concerns about mercury and fish led to the popularization of the term heavy metal poisoning, where the food we ate was slowly and quietly killing us, which is a pretty good metaphor for the vibe of a lot of metal pioneers. And of course, heavy metal could be referring to the actual material itself, either as a reference to the guitar strings the music was played on, or to the often medieval aesthetic with heavy metal armor and the like. Plus, there was an underground beatnik band with the incredibly unwieldy name Hapshash and the Colored Coat featuring the human host and the heavy metal kids, probably referencing Burroughs' novels, although their music had nothing to do with heavy metal as we know it today. So we've got plenty of possible sources, but which of them actually inspired the name of the genre? Well, that depends who named it. For that story, though, I'll hand this over to Patrick. Take it away. Thanks, Twelve Tone. There seems to be a lot of different stories of how a substance from the ground ended up sharing its name with a genre of music. And trust me, as someone who deals with etymology a lot of the time, nothing is more infuriating than conflicting stories. One story we have previously mentioned was the works of William S. Burroughs and his Heavy Metal Kid, and the term heavy metal was used frequently in the Nova series, for his character's name and as a stand-in for hard drugs, though Burroughs never actually linked heavy metal with any kind of music. That didn't happen till later on with rock critic Lester Bangs, who referenced Burroughs' work in his Cream magazine articles. However, this is where conflicting stories come into play, as while it was long considered to be Bangs who first used the term in his Cream articles, the earliest mention of the term in that magazine doesn't come from his writing, but rather a review of the album Kingdom Come by Sir Lord Baltimore, written by a different Cream reviewer, Mike Saunders in May 1971. However, Saunders has gone on to say that while the term was coined in 1971 when he wrote the article, he claimed that he most certainly didn't coin the term, saying it was most likely the aforementioned Bangs. However, Saunders changed his story later in life, claiming he did use it first in a 1970 article in Rolling Stone, calling the band Humble Pie a noisy, unmelodic, heavy, metal-leaden rock band, and claiming the term came to him from his freshman chemistry classes where heavy metals in a chemical sense were present and talked about often, not from Burroughs' work, which he had not read. Aside from these two, others have claimed the coinage of heavy metal too. Rock critic Sandy Perlman is the self-proclaimed coiner of the term, saying he used it in his review of the notorious Bird Brothers album By the Birds, which came out in 1968. However, while it's hard to find the article online, sources who have read it claim that he never used the term heavy metal itself, but just used metal to describe the sound of the music. Barry Gifford is an interesting contender too. We have proof that he used the term heavy metal all the way back in 1968, three years before Bangs or Saunders, in his review of an Electric Flag album, though he has gone on to say while he did use the term, he only used it to describe the music and not to refer to the genre. I mean, listen to their music. It sounds 
little like the heavy metal we think of. A big thank you for all this info has to go to Dina Weinstein and her study into the origins of heavy metal. I'm sure 12 Tone will leave a link to the article in the description. So I guess we need to figure out who exactly gets the coin in crown for heavy metal. Well, I think we can remove Pellman and Gifford from the running. Pellman didn't use the term when he said he did, and Gifford has said that his use of heavy metal was not as a name for the genre. That leaves us with Bangs and Saunders, who have both claimed to have coined it. And after some more digging, Professor Weinstein seemed to have found an answer. It was Bangs, but not in any Cream articles. Instead, it comes from a review he wrote in Rolling Stone of the band The Guess Who, published earlier in 1970 than Saunders' Humble Pie review, where he described the band as quite refreshing in the wake of all the heavy metal robots of the year past. Here, probably for the first time, the term was used to describe not a sound, but a collection of musicians and bands. He was describing a genre, even if it was one he didn't actually like. There's a couple interesting things to note here. First, as Patrick mentioned, many of these early reviews were using the word metal not to describe a genre, but a specific sound. The music sounded metallic, much like other songs could be described as bright or bouncy. It was an adjective, not yet a name. The other important point is that many of them were using heavy metal as an insult, describing the artist as stiff, robotic, and dreary. They were trying to put the music down, not celebrate it, but they inadvertently created a name that perfectly conveyed the strength, power, and weight of the budding genre. It wasn't the only option, though. Musicians of the time were also calling this new style heavy rock, acid rock, and one of my personal favorites, downer rock. Each of these captured a different element of the music, but in the end, it was heavy metal that won out. And it's a good thing, too. Can you imagine if we had to describe bands like Metallica, Behemoth, or White Zombie as downer rock? As for why it won, it's probably a mix of everything we discussed. No single source can really claim full credit. Steppenwolf's song put the term in people's heads, as did Burroughs' book and Mendeleev's table. By the time early critics started using the term, people were already familiar with it in other contexts, making it easy to accept and incorporate. In the words of Professor Weinstein, heavy metal had been floating around the culturescape, ready to be captured and made a name. Basically, metal was just... meant to be. And if you want to learn to play it, I'd recommend this video's sponsor, Skillshare. We've been talking about metal, so I figured this would be a good time to take a look at their guitar section, and they've got plenty. There's over a hundred guitar classes for all different skill levels. I've been especially interested in their blues guitar stuff, since the blues are such a foundational element of so much modern music, including metal. There's a cool course called 15 Essential Blues Guitar Licks that I've been watching through if you're looking for somewhere to start. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Skillshare is an online learning platform with lessons in just about everything, so whatever you want to learn, music or otherwise, you can probably probably find it there. If that sounds interesting, they're offering two free months to the first 500 people to click the link in the description, and if you like it, you can keep going for just 10 bucks a month after that. If you watch my channel, you know that affordable educational materials are really important to me, and Skillshare provides access to all sorts of knowledge at a pretty reasonable price. They have experts in graphic design, animation, and even business stuff if you're into that sort of thing, all for just 10 bucks a month. Or, again, free for two months with a link in the description. And hey, thanks for watching, thanks to our Patreon patrons for making these videos possible, and extra special thanks to this video's featured patron. Duck. If you want to help out and get some sweet perks like sneak peeks of upcoming episodes, there's a link to our Patreon on screen now. You can also join our mailing list to find out about new episodes, like, share, comment, subscribe, and above all, keep on rocking.